you said, the footy uh, round started last Thursday night. It finished yesterday. Cranks up again tomorrow. A man that can't get enough of oh, the ball. Yes. And we're lucky to have him here. As I said, he's the life. Flashed before his eyes on uh, Monday at the MCG. So we're thankful the 300-game superstar is alive and well and he's here. John Sammy Newman. <laughs> Good to see you, mate. It was a very torrid Anzac day for me, anyhow, Gaz. This is true. Uh, it is true, I know. I was chatting to folk, as is my custom, out in the car park mm. before the giant uh, of Stetford. Yes. Mm. And um, <laughs> a fire suddenly oh. erupted. I think we have a little of it on uh, vision here. Yeah, and <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, no. It was an explosion Jeez. of that magnitude. <laughs> well, That's a savage that, fire. That is a big fire. I think, I think we put the wrong vision up. <laughs> uh, but look, uh, I was actually chatting and a gas bottle oh. uh, erupted. Uh, they, you know, the barbecue yes. is going on. I don't know if you've met Johnny Moncrief, who uh, is head of Monjon Security. And right. John comes with us on Street Talk in case people want to knife me or yes. mm. throw anthrax at me or something. <laughs> and we think John's been watching one or two movies too many. Maybe Tommy Berenger's uh, <laughs> Someone to Watch Over Me or yes. the remake with Kev Costner or yes. The Bodyguard. Yes. Because uh, when that exploded, <laughs> he <laughs> threw me and an elderly woman who was walking in front of me <laughs> to the ground and yelled out, BOMB! <laughs> And if I hadn't been in peak physical condition, oh, yes. I, I could have been dead. Oh, really? uh, the way I picked myself up was only then we realised there was a woman under me. Uh, <laughs> and she... Uh, a, a rare occurrence for you. <laughs> <laughs> Very nicely done. Um, we, I, we, I do believe, uh, not long, just not long after that, some distance away, someone, I think, lit a cigarette with a big lighter and by this time, John was a bit jumpy. <laughs> and he yelled out, incoming, and down I went again. <laughs> I spent most of the afternoon under maintenance trucks and vans and cars and anything well, that was in the car park. We actually have got the vision. We're do legitimately yeah, doing this. Right. This is what happened here. Get away, guys. Move away. Move away. Get away. Move away. <laughs> In the name of what he does, John smothered me like, uh, I think, when Reagan was shot, the yeah. president. Mm -hmm. and, he, and I, I remember I had the <laughs> microphone almost jammed into my esophagus and I had a monocle which I was yes. trying to wear and that got wedged in behind my jowls here. <laughs> And uh, John's a big man, and uh, he said, Bomb, Sam, I said, I said, John, get off me. <laughs> he said, there could be shrapnel. I said, I don't give a stuff. Get off me. And the woman said, get off me, too. She was on, uh, it was a frightening, it was a frightening <laughs> day, and we all got a bit toe out that, guess, to be honest. <laughs> oh, so it. you awesome. pushed on, you went on with the job. Well, I, I, Difficult I, circumstances. I, I, intrepid I was actually a bit shaken, guys, mm. and uh, just had to have a couple of oh, we're brandies back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're looking forward to that, the Anzac Day version of uh, Street Talk, oh, of course. Now, Gary mentioned the panel Steve. off the top. Yep. We've got a man who we haven't seen yet in 2011. He is an all-time footy show favourite, a three-time Premiership superstar of the Brisbane Lions. It's great to have him back, John O'Brown. <laughs> As impressive as those two gentlemen are, and the big forwards we always love to have on the footy show, and they don't come any better than those two, this man is backed by unbelievably popular demand. A young man who was so impressive last week, I think Facebook fosses and Twitter and emails have gone absolutely nuts for his return from the Banyul Bears. Make him welcome Connor Rogers! <laughs> Boys, 
as we normally start with the big guns, but we're going to start with you, Connor. It's great to have you back, mate. Yeah, thanks, Gary. It's good to be here. Uh, we, we actually, we had you all set to go last week, but you, we can't have the kiddies on too late, so you didn't get a gig. You are a bit disappointed last week. Oh, yeah, a tad. I was looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and James mentioned Facebook. It's gone nuts. They're all your mates are watching. You've got a new nickname that you were telling me uh, before. Yeah, uh, all the boys at the club have calling me Eddie because I say I'm the next face of Channel 9. Well, we can only have Connor on for a segment because it's a school night. Oh, yes. How are the Azuma boots going? Oh, they're grouse. Grouse, Sam. <laughs> hey? They're uh, top notch. Top notch, are they? We're giving them all to the kids. Yeah, the beautiful yeah. boots. If not, now, Connor, we, you had a few, a few questions you wanted to ask the boys here. Yeah, uh, Jack, I just noticed that your body uh, movement's been a lot better recently. <laughs> <laughs> the old yeah. body language. Yeah. Old body language, yes. Yeah. Uh, obviously, a couple of weeks ago, mate, wasn't up to scratch and I uh, worked hard on it now and mm. I'm uh, obviously a fine young example for all the kids out there now to have a bit of a And uh, Brownie. Yes, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Brisbane haven't been in uh, top form. Do you think they're as bad as everyone says they are? No, we're not, but it's hard convincing uh, zero and four. Uh, I suspect that we're a zero and four team, especially simple-minded people. But uh, <laughs> we'll win a few over the next few weeks, mate, and we'll start on Saturday night against Jack's boys. Uh, Don't you just love match. the little nipper? <laughs> 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 now, you, you play this week too, Connor. We're going to have a look at your team a little bit later on. It's a big game. You've, had, uh, you've still had the numbers coming down to training over the past yeah, couple of weeks? Yeah, we've had uh, everyone come down, which is... Good, we didn't have enough players last time. Yep. Now, now Connor, everybody's turned down to training. That's good. Connor, did your boys enjoy this moment last week? Because we certainly did. Let's get it rolled. You're in the middle of the club song and then you just managed to Gatorade the old fossil. How did that feel? Well, it wasn't just us I was happy. I think it was half of Australia as well. Oh. <laughs> Here's the... Uh, Here's the bad news, Connor. We're deducting the cost of a suit <laughs> from the uh, fiscal yeah. bottom line of Banyol. <laughs> Unfortunately, the suit is worth more than the whole of Banyol. Oh. Oh. I only speak seriously. No, yeah. no. Well, you stick with us, Connor, because we're going to have a look at your game shortly. But, Brownie, great to have you back, mate. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Brown back here. Forced to, forced to be reckoned. Connor, with. down at Banyol, would you have thought to stuck your foot out of the ball coming towards you like that, mate? Oh, I'm not? a pretty good player. I reckon I could have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, at the moment, she's 40 love. Oh, oh, I've been oh. warned. I've got a... <laughs> no, you do. Look, we've only got this young man for a little bit of time because, of course, uh, we have got some restrictions on how long we can have kids on the box. So what we need to do with you, uh, Connor, is get to the first game, which is an absolute monster. Banyul versus Beverly Hills. Let's have a look at the Beverly Hills side first. There they go as they line up. I understand Big Joshy the Ruckman gives plenty. Aaron the Cinnamon's been OK. Brody's been leaking a few in the back half. <laughs> but uh, Scotland, the big half in our forward and there is... In the back pocket, lucky to be yeah, there. Well, oh. and then, and oh. Have a look at the ends. Our man Charlie's in out of retirement, of course, and Lewis has recovered from a broken arm, and that took two or three weeks longer than it should have. But Gary and Sam are out for missing training, of course, at Banyul on the weekend. So these two big sides, and this is a bitter, bitter rivalry. It's a blockbuster, and I'm having a look at that uh, Banyul side again, uh, Connor, named on the back flank. What's that about? Oh, well, you know, I'd like a run in guts, but I play well anywhere, so I don't <laughs> care where I play. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, maybe, Jim, maybe you could take the kangaroos down to Banyul. You oh. might, not, <laughs> might not chop your first win, <laughs> boss. <laughs> Uh, Beverly Hills, by the way, the home of Paul Roos and Gary Pert as young footy players. So, uh, big rivalry. Jack, who do you like in this big one? Uh, well, I saw here that the, uh, the Banyol boys are going for their second win in three seasons. So, uh, <laughs> hopefully they can get over the line and, uh, and sing the song. Yeah, nice yeah. one. Brownie. Yeah, I'm going to uh, go for Banyol, mate. Connor off the halfback flank should do a great job. But I just want to ask him, is, is he a... Plastic surgery on his uh, forehead, Dan <laughs> Connor, because uh, you got just as flat a forehead as uh, Sammy over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Nah, the makeup girls do a good job. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, got... Speaking of girls, Connor, uh, since you've been on the show, have you had any, a little bit of extra attention from the... Well, sort of I had uh, attention before I went on, but after, there's a little bit more as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, Connor, that, um, that, hairs <laughs> that hairstyle you're running with, is very Gary Lyon-like. Have you uh, modelled it on the great man? Or... Well, it's the only place where I have hair, so I'm not like Gary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just about down enough of Connor. Get him off. Get him off before I catch a snatch out of his butt that he won't be able to sit Five down on for a week. Five minutes early might see the end of you, Connor. Uh, you, yeah, well, there's Sunday. It was unbelievable. It wasn't a bad one, actually. Yeah. Sunday, one o'clock, you'd be out of bed, boy. Then what about getting down and watching the Banyul boys up against Beverly Hills? Gary, I Come on. What? Do it. Go down and watch them play their first game at Zerby's Reserve in what? Doncaster. Zerby's. Zerbs. Z uh, I'm not going down to Banyul ever, Gary. I've <laughs> <laughs> well, given them boots. You got the boot sizes? Yep. We, it's not in Banyul, Sam. It's in Doncaster. What? You should be able to come down. What's right, that, yeah. mate? It's not in Banyul, it's in Doncaster. You should be able oh, to right. come down. Well, that's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, we're going to... Uh, it's been great, haven't you? Connor, Hasn't let's it been be honest. But, uh, you need to get to bed. Yeah. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please thank Connor for coming in. Uh, <laughs> We're going to take a break. Plenty more still to come on the footy show. A lot of criticism for that, but they're actually functioning well. They are, and they came out and had a great win against Adelaide. But after this loss, Matthew promised the coach he had to front up at the press conference, and this is what he had to say. I just start off by first of all uh, just apologising to our supporters for uh, the effort that was produced today. Uh, <coughs> We've got to delve real deep into our psyche of our club and uh, understand why we produce these kind of results. It takes a big man to do that, and that's what ex exactly what you need to do when your performance is less than satisfactory. In fact, pathetic, I think is fair to say. And our man Sam Newman also <laughs> had to front up this week and uh, delve into his own <laughs> psyche because his performance last week on our show was less than um, <laughs> acceptable, and he also had this to say. Look, I'll just start off first of all by apologising to our fans for the effort that was produced last week. <clears throat> Mailbag was shit, I was shit. I stumbled over my words, lost my place, got confused about what photo was what, and then it just went all wrong after that. To our supporters and sponsors, we will delve into the psyche of mailbag and try and understand how it can become a more consistent, mature product. Meanwhile, here's a tea cosy that looks like Gary. <laughs> material into an apology. <laughs> in f in and a crisp one. That's not, that's not acceptable. In fairness, that's not acceptable. I liked it. In fairness to my good self, Gary, what? I was concussed last week. You would remember I had the cut oh. there. <laughs> and I actually should have been substituted <laughs> midway through the show. Yeah, we agree. Uh, and I, I just <laughs> hope that didn't affect any late surge in voting for the Logies. The Logies are on this Sunday. Is he going? Uh, uh, of course I'm going, you and are. I am, and I wonder who will get beaten by this one. Well, well, if, you put up, if you put up Master a nice performance... Chef discussing the tips, or... If you put up a nice performance here, Foss, or, <laughs> uh, you Bondi may be getting vet. us over the line, because here, ladies and gentlemen, is Sam's Mailbag. Oh, here we go. This could be the difference between a Logie and not, if you yeah, very still, you can still yeah, well, quickly vote. If well, we they might be waiting in. to see how you go now, so, so get it right. We all got together and put votes Come on, in. let's go. Uh, this is Brian. Brain. Uh, this is Brian. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got brain here. Yes. Good Brian of Waikiki in Western Australia. Is there such a place? Yes, there is. Is there? Yep. A couple of weeks ago, you had a little dog and footy on your 500th <laughs> show, and I think you said his name was Monty or something. This is what Brain says. I was wondering if you could put me in contact with the dog's owner. 
The reason being that our property man broke his arm and we have no one available oh. to handle the task of pumping up the balls. <laughs> oh, no. Now, this is, uh, you might be familiar. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, it's Connor gone, isn't it? Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, who else could we employ Monty to do? What could he do? Put the holes in Krispy Kreme donuts? Oh. Or? Oh. What could he do? Oh. What could he do? <laughs> Not sure. Could he could yeah, go down would... to Bob Jane T Marts and pump Come it on. Oh, All right, well, <laughs> he could go to Holland and all right. plug up the dikes. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this is Serge of Carayo, mm. Carayo down being near Geelong. Well, in fact, it is part of Geelong. <laughs> I thought I... Dear Sam, I thought I saw something on the news the other week about one of your audience members being arrested for something. <laughs> is that true? You didn't mention it. Uh, that is true, wasn't it? There it was. was some sort of scandal. Um, uh, this is the story. The footy show started off smoothly enough. Welcome to the footy show. Great to be here. But not entertaining enough for one audience member who headed to the car park, the man commandeered a motorised car belonging to the lighting crew and after a quick couple of laps, the man motored off into the night. It's believed his trip took him out of the Television City precinct, through Docklands, down Flinders Street and eventually into King Street. The buggy was parked out the front of the Waterside Hotel. By the time police had been alerted, the man had headed across the street to the Spearman Rhino nightclub where it's believed Police made their arrest. That's, uh, that's Spearman Rhino. The Spearman Rhino. It's a gentleman's club. What? It's a stripper, strippers club. Right? Stri strippers Stripper club. club. Yeah, it is. I think. Uh, thanks, Gary. <laughs> yeah. But no thanks. Even cleaning up. Thanks, thanks Gary. Everyone would understand no. what the Spearman Rhino is. Right. No, spe <laughs> no, that's right. Why is it called? It's a big know. horn out the front. I don't sure. know. Uh, now, during the week, we spoke to the Docklands security about how this was allowed to happen, and this is what they said. Oh, I see nothing. I was not here. I did not even get up this morning. <laughs> Chris worked so far. Yes. Uh, and police oh. have released. Oh. What? what? You're going Should well. say no nothing. Police yeah. have re re released, mm -hmm. released vision of a man that they wish to speak to in relation to the theft. Oh, maybe oh. let's go and see the strippers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now that's... Now look, that's Andy, and this is serious. That's Andy, he's a great friend of ours, and he's ill. He's not well, oh, he's and so Andy... Uh, he's not if a suspect, by the way. No. No, no, he wanted to sprinkle chocolates over the yeah, women's know, breasts. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to do. I don't he, think he can do. Well? I'm not saying you're allowed to do that, incidentally. No. Uh, that's what Andy wanted all to right, do. All right, all right. Although I wasn't allowed to do it, anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, Andy, if you're watching our son, we hope it's not serious and you get yep. well soon. That's from all of us. Absolutely. Right, uh, now, this is finally Marta. Marta of Diamond Creek, here is Dear Sam. Here is something you and the panel might like to get involved in, particularly Gary. In America, the Fort Wayne City Council of Indiana has invited people to vote on a name for a new building. Over 23,000 people want the centre named after a former Lord Mayor, but the council isn't so sure. Uh, now, see if you'd name the building after this man. The people voted, and the top pick so far with more than 10,000 votes is the Harry Balls Government Center, named after one of the city's longest serving mayors. But not everyone's on board with that name. Harry Balls was the mayor of Fort Wayne back in the 1930s and 40s. He even served a term in the 1950s. We have a street named after Harry Balls, so what's the big deal about naming the new city county government building after him? Oh. Now, people think. <laughs> His name is Harry Balls. <laughs> but, but look, that is, that's ha Harry, ha just in case you're confused, that is who they, that is, Her that is who they want to name the Lord Mayor or the Town Hall after. And this, of course, is oh, the no. other top. <laughs> now,
That is the man they're going to name the building after, and that is the other type. Uh, just in it. case there's a confusion. Well, on that classy note, if you want to be a part of Sam's Mailbag, GPO Box 9, Melbourne, Victoria 3001, or sams.mailbag at nine.com.au, or of course the footy show.com.au. We are going to take a break here in the top oh, from the footy show. It's yeah. kind of gone, it's, oh. it's cost us the logie. On the other side of it. <laughs> We're going to have a look at some of uh, the big stories that are coming up in the AFL, including asking the players their favourite karaoke songs. So stick around. Oh. On the tsunami yes. uh, during the course of this week. Firstly, for Connor Rogers to reappear, oh, but secondly, hundreds of thousands of people have emailed us requesting. Well, they've said to us, "Did you see the winner of the stall gift and especially his last couple of metres?" Hemi. Here he goes. Oh. Mitchell Williams, his name is. He tore his hamstring off the bone inside the last metre of the race, but still managed to guts it out and win, which is quite extraordinary. So people, when they emailed us, said, A, have you seen that? And B, do you think, as we do, that it reminds you of this? Something yeah. we obviously thought was tremendously humorous the at the time. The only thing different about those two people doing the hamstring is that he earns about one hundredth less than you did for tearing yours. <laughs> well, do you know he didn't back himself off the map? It wouldn't matter what he backed himself for, he'd be earning less than what you'll get. Well, what we also <laughs> like, Gary... <laughs> <laughs> what we also liked was his post... Race yes. interview. Have a we listen did. to what he had to say, old yeah. Mitchie Williams. And tonight, what do you think's on offer? I don't know, probably get pissed. Some ice. <laughs> yeah, my hands are showering. Just get pissed. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, good on him. That's a fine effort by Mitch Williams over there. Did you watch that? About who I, what is my favourite player? Idolise. I, I watch very, very closely. Yes. This caught my eye. I couldn't work <laughs> out what was the inspiration oh, for this. Have a look at this man. Right, Just lost his go. way. <laughs> Blind turn. That's it. Look at this. Didn't know where he was. Now, I, I can't work out why All he would do that. the very, very good players have been known to do that, Gary. <laughs> well, we, we thought the same force. The old blind turn <laughs> when the ball's nowhere near is an unusual one in footy, but... Uh... <laughs> Oh, that's <laughs> <terrible>. <laughs> the game, so he's he stuck the bird, but he's a young bloke and he's going to have the odd bit of criticism here, here and there, but he's, he's already bounced back from it within the space mm. of a week or two, and that shows a hell of a lot of character. And the, no doubt. And guys, emotional... Emotional big forwards and the Richmond Football Club go hand in hand, of course. Well, straight away, uh, the first name that came to mind was poor old Matthew Richardson. Big Jack, Joe. You felt a bit guilty about that. We, we didn't think about uh, Matty Richardson at all. We thought of this man straight away when we saw emotional outburst. <laughs> that is, uh, of course, our great mate Brian, who'll be sitting at home watching What's this bristle. There, bristle. I didn't want to play at bristle, but Jim said we had to. Oh, yeah. And that, oh, I think that's unfair, because he was a man always in charge of his emotions there, Brownie. Sensational bit of, bit of footage, I reckon. I can't wait to uh, see that again, Bristol, if you're at home watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You think he's finished? <laughs> I can't believe now he's commenting on us and probably criticising blokes like Jack Wood yeah. Rewell and all that for their body language. That is a disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who, who's uh, a bird to? Um, uh, oh, the Hawthorne Honour had a few things to say me <laughs> out on the ground and then uh, as I was coming off, I decided to try and get off nice and quick, so I came off in front of their bench, so... Uh, I think young Ty Vicker could come on, and yeah. uh, he said something to me, so I thought uh, I thought I'd get away with it, but uh, obviously not. Big Brother is watching. No where to hide now, Jackie? Uh, Clubs take on a very. Come on, Gary. 900 that bucks for just, that, Sam. We're worrying about that. Oh, 
wasn't even, it was a, just, a sneaky one, just yeah. popped just out. Just a little bit. <laughs> 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 I mean, precious seriously. Anyway, oh, precious God precious almighty. Mate. What, are we trying to save the world from what itself? Oh. Fossil's got a different style when he flips it, and he? you sort of got a fat fingered sort Flip of... Flip that again. Go yeah. on, give another. Look! <laughs> It's an old man's <laughs> finger job. What's an old man's yeah, finger? You, you need to get it straight, Foss. It's a Gary, sort of we've had a lot of calls. Uh, uh, is oh, the... no. <laughs> Gary. 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 I don't want to look at that. Are they? Come on. Oh, oh, we've you. had a lot to Are they Gary. What, reminiscent? <laughs> are they a facsimile of, or in fact, are they yours? <laughs> oh, no. I, I'm only. Oh, no. I, I must say, they feel really lovely. I reckon, <laughs> reckon that's the second time you've had these on the show. You love them, don't you? I do a lot. <laughs> we love uh, you just, Richmond. You just love having them. Uh, he was very chuffed with the Suns win, Jimmy. You mm. remember Jimmy? Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. Jimmy. You haven't bought another one in Yeah, oh, but his, oh, yeah. his oh, brother. No. Oh, no. His brother was oh, no. watching the Suns yeah. do some of their finest work and was he gobsmacked. Oh. They might score the goal to win. Matera has been lurking. Oh, no. Russell, no. that could be the goal. Oh, he's kicked it. <laughs> oh, oh, no. The only last goal of the Gold Coast Suns with their first ever AFL win. <laughs> what are we dealing with? <laughs> what do you do? Are you just sitting up in the penthouse on YouTube trying to find cats? He doesn't, he doesn't know how to do YouTube. He gets, no, no. Where are you he getting them from? Jimmy the cat. Yeah. And his brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, not an animal. It's not computer enhanced. That is actually Jimmy and his brother. Oh, uh, nice. Gary, do you think well, what that do you mean? Um, uh, uh, Essendon are going to win this game yeah, or the Gold Coast? I do, Jim. Uh, we have had a very, very... Very good line before. He what said was it? those cat shots. He said, yeah. you just look up YouTube under pussy. Oh, <laughs> crisp one, Foss. Oh, it's crispy at 10.30, yeah, yeah. Fossil. A uh, little one to go out with. Not often. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We do a footy show the day after a round finished and the day before another one starts, but that's what we've done tonight. So a little bit different. The hand <laughs>